God loves you? Yes. Yes, he does. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, for some of you, it really is. <laughs> okay, I'm not looking at anybody in particular. <laughs> he loves you. Yes, he does. And if you just stop and listen, you'll hear his voice on a regular basis say, I love you. I love you. You know, when you're going through that hard time and that struggle and that battle, to hear somebody say, I love you. You know, that's so refreshing. You just, I don't know, even after you're married, you'd still like your husband to say that, wouldn't you, ladies? To, to hear him say, I love you. Like once a year, maybe. <laughs> Thanks, you know, it's Valentine's Day or something. No, it is wonderful. And God says to you every day, I love you. I love you. There is something that just physically happens to you when you, when you have that happen. It's like, it's like a hug. You know, we all need hugs occasionally. And brownies. <laughs> the more brownies, the harder it is to hug you. Just saying. <laughs> oh, are you excited about what God's doing? Yeah. Yeah. Man, you know, and as we look, God, uh, this is the prime season to tell people about Jesus. Yes. Yep. To talk to them about the gift that God gave all of us, the gift of life. And uh, so this morning as we're, we're headed in, we got today, we got next Sunday, and then the 16th, we got the kids program. That's the, if you can only come one Sunday, well, if you can only, this is a Facebook thing, if you can only come one Sunday, the 16th, it won't be the same on there as it is in real life. <laughs> So show up on the 16th. That was my commercial. <laughs> it is always so great. It is so great. So, uh, you know, as we're entering into this Christmas season, and uh, I want to go to Luke chapter 1 this morning. I want to take a look at changing everything. Changing everything. You know, uh, how do you, if you were God, and you were going, your heart and passion was to change the direction and the course of all mankind, how would you do that? How would you choose to change the heart and the direction of all mankind to, to make that transformation? So I thought about that, I thought, wow. How would you do that? How could you change the course of all mankind? How would you do that? You would send some really wise, king, powerful person. See, the Jewish people were waiting for a Messiah. In fact, some of them are still waiting for a Messiah. They're waiting for somebody to come along and fix everything in the natural. It, you know, in Jesus' day, they were waiting for a king to show up, and I don't know how they thought he was going to show up, but I, I, th I think their thought process was, he's just going to show up as a full-size person, and people will rally around him, and he will overthrow the Romans, and he will rule and reign, and everything will be wonderful, and we'll get to be in charge. See, that last part is what doesn't really work. God has a totally different plan. Yes, amen. And, uh, and actually, uh, before we go to Luke, Isaiah 55, and, and this has been, I've just been kind of stuck in these verses the past, I don't know, two or three, four months, maybe. It says where it says, 
Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. You see, we all have a plan of how things should be, but God has the right plan. Amen. He has the best plan. He has, And it's not how we would do it. Ah, so irritating. Have you ever watched somebody do a project? We were uh, putting sheetrock up in my garage this week. You ever put sheetrock up on the ceiling? I don't know who designed this, but they don't put the light sheetrock on the on the ceiling. They put that on the walls. They they give you the heaviest sheetrock and say, "Now you put that on the ceiling." And you're like. What? So, but there is a tool that you can rent. It's a lift thing. And where you put it on, and then you crank it. And my ceiling's at nine feet. Wow. Just a smidgen higher. <coughs> that way, I don't know. You can hang bigger deer than, than I don't know. <laughs> and, and this lift thing, at eight foot six, it would do this drop thing. You're going, ah, ah! It's kind of a come to Jesus moment. <laughs> and after about 10 sheets, you would think you would have that figured out. But it, it scared my friend Barry. Barry and Tammy, they're here with us today. And uh, he showed up thinking they would just get to stay at our house and eat food and nice job. enjoy life. I'm like, here's a drill. Good luck. We need to squeeze in those sheet rocks. <laughs> And you know, him and my son, I love when people come to visit. We get a lot of work done. <laughs> They're putting the sheetrock up, and there are certain points that I'm thinking, that's not how I would do it. But then I thought, I, if they do it, I don't have to do it. <laughs> you know what? God says, here, I will do it the right way. Sometimes we look at God and say, God, this isn't the right way. God always has the right way. Because he knows more than you know. And so whatever situation you go, you are going through, he is orchestrating it and he's arranging it to bring him glory and further the kingdom of God. Amen. You notice I didn't say to make your life easier? <laughs> Because it's not about making your life easier necessarily. It's about advancing the kingdom of God. Right. So that people can know about Jesus and their lives can be changed and transformed. Amen. Following Jesus is not easy. It's dangerous and sometimes it will get you killed. Amen. We have a volunteer. Right. <laughs> I've been watching uh, the news and reading the articles about the young man who went to that tribe on that island and uh, mm -hmm. how uh, he wasn't just a crazy person. He was a person who had a passion for reaching lost people for yeah. Jesus and Jesus had laid those people on his heart and he had researched it and he was going there to build relationship and then perhaps tell them about Jesus. He wasn't just a fly-by-night evangelist or whatever. He was... He was a guy who said, God, show me and lead me, but if it costs me my life, I'm okay with that. If it costs me everything that I have, I'm okay with that. Because following Jesus, being a part of his plan, there is a price. There's a price. Well, I want to read out of, uh, out of Luke, and uh, I want to take a look at this morning, uh, um, changing eternity, changing everything, and who God chooses. So we say, we, we, in, uh, it says, In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered, what kind, of, what kind of greeting this might be? But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. 
You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. You know, and that's a lot of great, wonderful things. Mary, and honestly, Mary was maybe 14, 15. Do we have any 15-year-old girls here today? 15, anybody, any girls in here 15, 14? In that ballpark range? Yeah, right in here, these, range, these girls, they're too shy to raise their hand. <laughs> God showed up to her at that age and said, Hey, Mary, first of all, you are highly favored. You are highly favored. God is about to orchestrate the transformation of all time. And who does he pick? A 14-year-old girl. What is he thinking? Because you guys are all afraid to say anything, aren't you? <laughs> Come on, some of you have had 14-year-old daughters, and they are not always the most stable. <laughs> No, oh, they're up and down and emotional and uh, some of you have 16 year old daughters and they're still not that stable. 18. 17. 18. 18. 18, sorry Grace. 18. <laughs> I said you found favor. And she says, it's so I, I so appreciate Mary because she was so practical. She, you're hearing all these great things about your son's going to be doing be all these things, and uh, she's like, the, um, um, angel guy, sir. I don't know that she knew his name, Mr. Gabriel. Um, we got we have, we have a, a slight problem. Uh, she says, uh, uh, "How can this be?" Mary asked the angel, "Since I'm a virgin." She was pledged to be married, but she was pure. She had chosen to walk in obedience to God's plan. Purity is God's plan. When people say to me, abstinence is not an option, yes it is. It's the plan of God That's right. that you stay single and stay clean and pure, the whole purity thing, until you're married. That's God's plan. And so she was following God's plan. Of your children, you love them all equally, true? Some of you are like, well... It's a whole lot easier to love the ones who follow your plan. Because if you have more than one child, you have at least one who's not following your plan. <laughs> I, just, I just love it when the parents start pointing. <laughs> so... It's, it's so much easier to love the one that... Now, God loves everybody, but his blessing tends to be on the ones who follow his plan. Yes, amen. So, if we're all children of God, do you want his blessing? Yes. Do you want to find favor with God? Yes. Follow his plan. Yes. Follow his plan. If you'll walk in obedience to what he asked you to do, to line up with the word of God, you will find favor with God. Finding favor is a great thing. That means he pours out blessings. He's able to do things for you because you're in line with that. So she says, well, uh, yeah, this won't work. And the angel said, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to, bo to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who is said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. And it's interesting because I have uh, verse uh, 37 in the NIV. It says, for no word from God will ever fail, which I like that. But in the end, New King James, it says, for with God, nothing will be impossible. I like that even better. 
for now did Mary say that? No. The angel said. How would the angel know? Hello, he's living with God. He's out of heaven. He has seen how God works. And he said, for with God, nothing shall be impossible, except for in my life. Well, how many of you got impossible things in your life? You're like, well, I, you know, that's just how it is. It's just, uh, what does nothing mean? Nothing. Nothing. That means everything is possible. Yes. Yes, Lord. Everything, you know, and as I as I look at the story, if you read through the, the, the chapters in Luke and Matthew, if you read through this story, and I encourage you this Christmas time to be reading through the Gospels and seeing who Jesus was, who Jesus is. Yeah. God chose the impossible to make the transformation in all of the world for all time. He chose the impossible. And first of all, the angel says, your, and I believe it was your cousin, Elizabeth, is pregnant. Your cousin, who was too old to have a baby, is pregnant. So, God chose old people to be a part of the plan. Amen. Come on, old people. Amen. Be with me here. There's hope. There's hope for all of us. That God, when, when we are so old that nobody else has any hope or belief or faith in us, they've all given up. And she had, in fact, she had given up. Her husband had given up. He was, he was like a minister. He was a, a priest and he was doing his thing. And the angel showed up and said, hey, dude, you're going to have a baby. And he goes, no, no, I don't think so. <laughs> and the angel said, you know, I am tired of listening to your turn. <laughs> you hit the mute button. That's right. <laughs> How many of you wish you had that for your children? <laughs> We're not even going down that spouse road. We're not going there. <laughs> mute button. The angel just said, mute. And Zachariah said, <laughs> And the angel said, this is more like it. I am not going to let you speak doubt into this situation. He said, you're going to have a baby. And he came out from doing his ministry and he couldn't talk. And the people were like, huh, he must have saw a vision or something. And he went home to be with his wife. And I don't know how he communicated, but he said, honey, I think we're going to have a baby. And she goes, yeah, you can't even talk. <laughs> As a pastor, I'm praying for a mute button. <laughs> I'm not going to give any specific names here. I'm good anyway. God says, I want to do the impossible. I want to do the impossible through you. So she became pregnant, but she didn't tell anybody because she didn't. Perhaps she had had miscarriages in the past. And she didn't want to get her hopes up. And so she just kind of was didn't share anything, didn't say anything. But the Holy Spirit said to Mary, said, you go. You're... Cousin Elizabeth is pregnant. She's going to have a baby. And uh, for with God, nothing will be impossible. And, 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 and for no word from God will ever fail. So if God speaks it, it's going to happen. Right. It is going to happen. You can count on it. You can just write on it. If, bang on it. If he makes a promise in your life, he's going to fulfill it. Yes. Right. He is going to do it. The, the, the scripture are full of times when God made promises 
and it seemed like it wouldn't happen. Abraham and Sarah made a promise, and it didn't happen, and it didn't happen, and it didn't happen. But he is the one, he is the original promise keeper. Yes. If he says it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Yes, it will. It says, she replied. And this is why God loved her so much. You see it in her words. Her words are reflecting her heart. She says, I am the Lord's servant. I am the Lord's servant. <coughs> Had you said that yet? You see, we, we come and we ask Jesus to forgive our sins and change our life and make every, fix everything in our life for us. But she made the statement, I am the Lord's servant. I, 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 I'm his servant. How, how does that whole servant thing work? The master gives instructions and the servant follows through. Right? She was saying, I am under your authority. And then she said, may your word to me be fulfilled. I am your servant. Whatever you speak, whatever plan you have for my life, that's what I want. Amen. That's what I want. So she's going to become pregnant without being married. Which in society today is not a big deal, but it was then. God designed marriage for kids. Amen. So, when Joseph found out, he was like, yeah, I'm going to divorce her. Because it's not mine. I know it's not mine. And uh, so, there's a whole bunch. It wasn't all just fun and games. It wasn't like, oh, you're pregnant. No, it's like, oh, you're pregnant. The shame. And it says that Mary arose in those days and went to the hill country with haste to the city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the baby leapt in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is this grand to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me. For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leapt in my womb for joy. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. <coughs> so she said, I want to go see the other miracle, God, that you're doing. So you got to... This, this, this really is so amazing to me. So God picks out old people, maybe 70s, 80s, I don't know. Sorry, I met somebody there. Older, older people. They were AARP members. Picked out them, and then he picked out the 15-year-old girl and says, here's going to be a core of what's going to happen of the transformation for all time. And so she, she goes to be with her. She goes to be with somebody who will help speak faith in her life. Who will speak faith in her life. Folks, I want to be around people who God's doing miracles in their life. I want to be around them because it will encourage me to have faith in my life, to believe for greater things, to pull together. It says, blessed is she who believed. How did Elizabeth know that Mary believed? Blessed is she who believed. See, if you really believe something, you act on it. If you really believe, if you really believe that God can heal you, you come to him and ask him. Right? Yeah. When you really believe, if, if 
if you're not sure, see, stepping out, like, to come forward for prayer, for whatever reason, it seems to be hard. It's hard for us to do that, isn't it? A, because you got to get out of the crowd. You got to get out of the crowd. Sometimes you're in the middle of the row and you got to get out of your row, but 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 you got to get out and you got to come front and you have to become a somewhat of a focal point of attention. People are going to gather around you and say, "Hey, what can we pray with you about? And, and how can we help you?" And then you get your share, and then they pray and they believe. And obviously, you believe, or you wouldn't have made that journey. <coughs> you made that journey because you have faith. She went to see Elizabeth because she believed. She believed in what God was going to do in her life. She believed. And therefore she acted. <coughs> and therefore she acted. We have a lot of people who say they believe, but it hasn't impacted your life. Your actions haven't changed. Mary left all that where she was and she went to hang out with Elizabeth. And Elizabeth spoke prophetically into her life that all those things that the angel said would be fulfilled. And then Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord. And my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. He has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. And for, and for behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me. And holy is his name. I think that she was a worshiper. You know, there's not an age limit to becoming a worshiper, to really worshiping God. I am so excited to see our young people, yes. our young men up here worshiping God. Yes. God sees that. He sees their heart. He sees their action. He says, I want to use you to do great things because as we look at the character of God, <laughs> we look at the character of God as we look at the transformation how he's going to send his son and the forgiveness of sin is going to take place for all mankind his character and his nature is still the same so Jesus did that blanket thing where he died on the cross so that our sins could be forgiven, but then there has to be an individual transformation in everybody's life. Everybody, everybody has to have that turning point in their life, that Jesus moment where they say, hey, you are the Lord and Savior, and I want you to forgive my sins and change my life. And this morning, this morning, somebody came to me and said, hey, I'm going to go to the hospital today to see somebody who's not doing very good. But they don't know Jesus. They don't know Jesus. Would you pray with me for their life to be changed, for their heart to be open and ready and receptive, and that as I speak the words, that their lives, can, their eternity can be changed forever. <coughs> that takes courage. Man, that takes courage to, 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 to go and share with someone. Just like Zachariah and Elizabeth and Mary were a part of God's plan for all mankind, you are a part of God's plan for the mankind around you. Your words, your actions are going to impact whether they get to heaven or not. Your life 
matters and makes a difference. You know, we've talked about before that, you know, people, their heart, their goal is, you know, they, they come to church and, and they get right with God because, A, they don't want to go to hell, and B, they'd like to go to heaven because, you know, there's only two choices. Pretty simple. So they're like, hey, I just want to get to heaven. But as you begin to walk in your faith with God, God begins to open your eyes and you begin to see the people around you who are lost, who, who don't have any hope, who have not had an encounter with an angel to speak hope in life in their life. And, and God is counting on you. And it doesn't matter whether you're old or whether you're young. I'll tell you, you're going to have a baby. <laughs> you say, okay, God, I'm too old for that, but... I'll, I'll go witness if you don't make me have any more babies. Please, God. I'll, I'll witness to everybody. You know, I, when you get old, you're not supposed to care what people think. So just tell them. Tell them they love how Jesus loves them. And how he wants to change their life and set them free. And that there is hope. Even if it's the last week of their life, they can still come to Jesus and he will forgive their sins. Right. Whether you're young or whether you're old, it doesn't matter. Jesus paid the price so that our sins could be forgiven, but we are that messenger to go out and share with them. We're that one. Their eternal destiny could be dependent on you. What people did God use? Did you read about Zechariah? I know they were, they were godly people. They were godly people. They were people who, who, even though they didn't get what they wanted for a long, long, long time and they had no promise of having children and they had given up on having children, they still were faithful to God. They were still serving God and loving God and being obedient to God. And God said, I have a plan for you. I have a plan for you. Our heart has to be like Mary's, who said, I am your sister. Bow our heads this morning. I am the Lord's servant. You see, God does not make us be his servant. He gives us a choice. He gives us a choice. Mary said, I choose to be the Lord's servant. I choose to allow you, God, to do whatever you want or need to in my life for the salvation of all mankind. of all mankind. It was a turning point in history. Your putting your faith in Jesus Christ is the turning point in your life and in your eternal life. That is that transformation point where you go from being all about yourself to saying, I'm a servant of Jesus. And I 
I want to serve him and I want to do whatever he asks for me to do. Because he already loved me and I love him for what he's done for me. And I want to serve him. The Heavenly Father chose to send his son as a little baby. this week. I am the Lord's servant, for with God nothing will be impossible. I want, I want us to say that. I am the Lord's servant. I am, I am the Lord's, Lord's servant. servant, for with God nothing, nothing shall be impossible. I am the Lord's servant. So this week, as you're progressing through your life this week, say, God, I'm your servant. In the morning when you get up, say, God, I'm your servant. What do you have for me today? Because you know what? He's got God encounters for you. He's got God encounters where you will run into somebody and you'll have the opportunity to bless, speak in their lives, tell them about Jesus, encourage them. He's got those out there for you. You don't run into those people. Probably at Walmart. <laughs> people at Walmart need a lot of help. <laughs> but if you're at Walmart, don't you fall by then too? Yep. There's a lot of help. That's right. That's right. I am the Lord's servant, for with God nothing will be impossible. Maybe there's something in your life that you've battled with for a long, long time. The angel said, for with God nothing is impossible. Are you trying to fix the thing in your life, or are you allowing God to fix it? God says, I, I know how to fix it. Sometimes we think we know how to fix things. I had a friend. I have a friend. Maybe after the illustration I will say I had a friend. I have a friend who has a Ford pickup who he said, I can fix this. You know, those Ford pickups, when you go to take the spark plugs out, they just break off. You gotta have a special tool, special thing, and so pop, 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 and, and then my friend said, I'm gonna take it to somebody who has the right tools and the right expertise. How many things have you tried to fix in your life that you've broken? At what point will you say, you know what? I'm going to go to Jesus because he's got the right tools and the right expertise to fix my heart, my relationships, and everything around me. Because he loves you. Do I still have a friend? <laughs> You should never talk to the pastor. <laughs> because you will be a sermon illustration. 
stand this morning. You know, because I'm right there with you. There's so many times and things in my life I tried to fix myself. You know, the old just say no. It doesn't really work. Say yes to Jesus and he will help you say no. Amen. He will help you have victory in that area. Amen. That part, exactly. Amen. Amen. Yes. I am the Lord's servant and nothing is impossible for God. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you. I thank you that truly nothing is impossible for you. You were able to break the, the bondage of addiction. You're able to set free. You're able to heal relationships. Most of all, you're able to forgive our sins. Every one of them. All of our sins. Forgiven. You are preparing a place for us in heaven. Jesus, thank you. Lord, doesn't matter whether we're young or old, you're able to use us. To do miracles in us and through us. Lord, we love you. We thank you.